Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite with a new FinSuite Webflow hack. In this hack, we learn how to create a pricing calculator with radio buttons and a Webflow form. We'll be adding radio buttons to our form, applying values to those radio buttons, and then adding up a total value on the web page based on which radios are selected. We'll also be submitting this value through with the form. Let's jump in and see how it works. We're in the live example and we have two radio groups here on the page. We have our branding radio group, we have our development radio group. We're going to be adding these two group values together and displaying it right here. Watch when I go and select service one or service three or service four that this added value is updating based on what I have selected here. And when I go and choose a development service on top of my design service, it will add on top of that value. So I can go and create any value, any amount of these radios, and as people select and unselect them, the total value will be added here. We're also going to send this value through on the form. Let's jump into Designer and see how this works. We're in Designer, we have a Webflow native form on the page. We're using a form because we need access to these radio buttons. We are using native Webflow radios here. And we have two different groups. Before I get into the classes, let's just make sure that we have our group set up. Very important for this. A group only allows you to select one radio within the group. So this is our branding group. And you can see as I select any one of these, the other one is unselected. Same with development. They're two different groups. And we're doing that natively in Webflow with the group name. Group name branding, group name branding, group name branding, and so on. When we go to development, we are using development here. So these are all part of the same group in development, part of the same group in branding. This is important when we get to the custom JavaScript. Now let's get into the classes. We have our Hack 43 radio label, which is the most important class and also a very important part of the UI. You can see here that we have a padding of 35 pixels and a negative 30 pixel margin. The reason we're doing this is to expand the total click target area for this radio. By default, when we go and drag this into our project, this is what it looks like. We have the radio separated from this radio button. If the user were to click outside of these two click targets, it's not going to click on the radio. So to better situate ourselves for the user to always select correctly, we are applying these styles. And you can see when I go and apply this correctly, that we have our label now expanding the entire size of this clickable target and more specifically over this radio input. This is important because we need to trigger just one class to then go add up our values. So anytime somebody is clicking the radio label, it's also clicking that radio button and that means we can go and add our values. So we have this class, the UI is important, Let's go on to the next class of Hack 43 added value. This is where we will be adding the total value of the selected radios. So it is saying, hey, added value, go where this text element is. And the last class is inside this HTML embed. It is a hidden field that we will be passing that total value to. So it is hidden. We have a class of hack 43 send value. And in JavaScript, we are going to generate this value attribute with the total added value. If you are not interested in submitting the total value through the form, you do not need this. You can go ahead and remove it. If you do want to add the total value to the form submission, you can use that. Excellent. And the last piece that we need are the data attributes. These are very important. Here we have an add value of zero, which is essentially a reset button for our radios. We have added add value 100, add value 400, and you guessed it, the value is the number that we wanna add up by, and the name 
is add value. We are using this for every single one of these. Every single one has its unique value attached to it. Please know that these data attributes are applied to the actual radio button. This is the custom input attributes. This is not the radio label. So we have it on the button. It has our value. And another thing to note that when we have a value with a comma or a period, we're not, or when we have it with a comma, we don't want to add that comma in there. We're just going to input the full number. Excellent. Okay, that's all we need inside Designer. Let's get into custom code and see how this JavaScript works. Let's break down this code line by line. Before the closing body tag, we're going to insert our script. The very first thing that we're going to do is run a click function on our hack 43 radio label. Hack 43 radio label is our official click target for our radio button. When this label is clicked, the radio will be selected. So when it's clicked, we're going to then run our function to add to our sum input. We are going to first declare our sum variable. We're not doing anything with it just yet. We're just saying there is something called sum and later on in the code, we will do something with this thing called sum. And let's start doing that by running an if statement. The if statement is going to check if the branding group was selected or if the development group was selected. So if we have the checkbox, uh, if we have the radio button selected from the branding group, go ahead and run this line. Else, in this case, if the name equals development, then we are going to run this line. Why are we checking if we're clicking on the branding group or the development group? With radios, we only have one option to choose per group. So if I choose something from the branding group, the first thing we're going to do is look to see if something was selected from the development group. If there is a value from the development group, then we'll add that branding value to the development group. If there is nothing selected from the development group, then we're just displaying what was selected in the branding group. And the same exact opposite goes for the development group in this else. When we click the development group, we're checking, is the branding group selected? If yes, let's add it to that branding group. If no, let's just display the development selection alone. Let's get into the code and get to the specifics, try to make some sense of this. Okay, if this, the hack 43 radio label previous is going to be targeting our radio input, what we have that data attribute on is name equals branding. So if we have our radio label inside the branding group, we're going to now use our sum variable. We're going to format it to a number and target this attribute add value. So in this it, in this, we are targeting our name equals branding. We're going to find the data attribute of add value and we are going to get that value of that radio. We're then going to add that value from that radio to our development group selected option. So we'll go and get that number. We're going to go to the input name equals development checked and we're going to get that data attribute of added value and then we add whatever was selected in branding to the existing development selection. If there is no development selection, we are going to default to zero. So that's why that zero is here. Let's say the user just got to the page and they only selected the branding. Then we are going to default to zero and then only show what was selected for branding. Awesome, now let's go to the else. So in this case, the branding is not the one that's selected. The development is the one that's selected. Now we're going to use this same sum and instead we're going to update it with the number of this previous attribute, what was selected, and we're going to add it to the number input name equals branding checked attribute add value. So we're taking what is already there in the branding 
and then we are adding the newly selected development selection to the existing branding selection. If there's nothing selected for branding, we will make this a zero and we will only show the development option alone. So this sum is being added to or just displaying itself based on what is selected in the other group. This is super powerful. You can keep going with this with more groups and you can do else if, else if, else if, else if, and then the last one should be else. And you can have 20 groups if you wanted. Uh, there would probably be a better way to set this up if you had 20 groups, but it would work. You can keep adding groups on top of this. Okay, now let's go format this number. We have this great added number from our branding group, from our development group, and it is displaying like this. If we wanna go add a comma to that number, we're going to create a variable called formatted sum. It's going to be a new number formatted, and we're going to format the sum that we just created here. Awesome, and now we have this new formatted sum that we can pass into the other fields and inputs that we want down here. So we'll go and target our hack 43 added value. This is the value that's visible to the user on the page so they can see the total value of what they're selecting. We'll update the text of that and we will pass in our formatted sum. This is what we just created here with our nice comma. And we'll also go and pass this through on the form input so that the total value is submitted along with the form. So we will add the, we'll go and target our hack 43 send value. We're going to update the value with our formatted sum so that when that form is selected, we will get the total value submitted with the form. If you don't want to format the sum and you just want the straight text without, or the straight number without the comma, you can go and do that by commenting out the formatted sum and then go and passing our sum in here. So here we have our sum. We're going to pass the sum right in here without any formatting. In this example, we are going to format it. I do like that comma in there and we can go and put a dollar sign in front of it and make it a price thing. That's it for radios. If you enjoyed the radios, you wanna see checkboxes, you wanna see selects, you wanna see them all together, check out Hack 42. This is 43, check out 44 and 45. We have a lot more with adding components from a form to a displayed total value. Thank you so much for checking out this hack. Please clone the project. We have the entire hacks project available for clone. Start learning how these hacks work and use them on your live site. We're always releasing new hacks. So if you want to be updated, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want a super simple plain text email when we release a new hack, sign up at finsuite.com hacks updates. If you want to request a hack, we'll check it out and see if it's possible in Webflow. Go to finsuite.com slash hacks dash request. That's effing sweet.